Excuse me. So this is my carnivorous ball garden, and I love carni collecting carnivorous plants, and so I decided to make a ball garden for them. And uh, what I used was just a pond, small pond from Lowe's. Well, you can get them at Lowe's. And then I made a mixture of two, of two parts sphagnum peat moss and one part from play sand from play, for sandboxes. But I do not use uh, sand from beaches because the sand from beaches contains too much salt and it will harm carnivorous plants and burn their leaves. And then later, you, I just sprinkled a sphagnum moss on the top to, as kind of a water meter level because when the water is good, then it will be a dark brown or green, and when it's not, and it's not, it'll be more scraggly and light gray or brown. Uh, so it's, 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 to check the water level, you'll press your thumb on the on the soil. The, potting medium and if it's moist but not saturated or anything then you have a good meat water and if you press it and water fills the thumb impression that means that it is too moist and you'll need to try to fix that by taking it out and squeezing it until it's good. And try to grow carnivorous plants that will do well in your area like, like it for the Americas you could grow Venus flytraps, Saracenia species and Drosera and butterworts and bladderworts. So what I have is, first of all, a hybrid of Saracenia, the American picture plants. This was from the white top trumpet plant, um, Saracenia lecophthia, and Saracenia pistachia, the parrot pitcher plant. And they were crossbred and became this hybrid the scarlet bell pitcher plant, which is SX wrigleyana. And then I have another hybrid over here that we'll get to later. And this one, the Venus flytrap, Dionia muscipula, is probably the most famous of carnivorous plants. And it's fairly easy to grow as well. And this, it, the Venus flytrap has many varieties and forms like red dragon, green dragon, and gremlin. And this one's B-52. And no, it's not named after a military airplane. But when it was created, that was the code it, they were using to describe it, to talk about it. And that became its common name, unlike most Venus flytrap varieties. Uh, but it's also called the big mouth in some areas because its traps are quite large and could be two inches across at times. And then this one, uh, Drosera slacky, it's a species of American sundew. Uh, it's ha it's creates these small one inch uh, rosettes in a pinwheel form of small rounded spatula like leaves. And then this is Saracenia olata, the pale trumpet plant. And it's called the pale trumpet plant not because of its pictures, but because of its flowers, which are a pale yellow. These flowers are actually the flowers of the sphagnum moss that it grows in, not the actual plant. It's not in its flowering season right now. And it's actually one of the largest types of pitcher plants and largest carnivorous plants, because some individuals can grow to be three feet tall, which is a record breaker among carnivorous plants. Then this one, another Saracenia American pitcher plant species, Saracenia purpurea, the purple pitcher plant, it's probably one of the most popular species of uh, pitcher plants to grow and one of the easiest as well. Uh, it pre creates large pitchers that have this strange thin layer of leaf sticking out from the middle of the pitcher and upright hoods rather than folded down like other Saracenia species. It produces pitchers that can be red, pink, purple, green, or even yellow and have these strange spines, which all Saracenia species have, but they're mainly visible only on S. purpurea because of its hoods are upright instead of folded down. It can catch la um, large insects like cockroaches and large grasshoppers. This one is the only aquatic carnivorous plant that I own at the time, 
It's a Tricula gibba. The black, it's a species of bladderwort. It's known to make very beautiful, large blue flowers. And it is probably the most easiest bladderwort to grow and it's good for beginners. But it's an aquatic bladderwort. It's not terrestrial, meaning it grows on land. This one grows in aquatic uh, water. Terrestrial bladderworts grow on land and aquatic grow in water. But that is a carnivorous plant? Yes, but it is a carnivorous plant. Uh, there are other aquatic carnivorous plants like the quartz group plant and water wheel, but water warts are the easiest to care for of aquatic carnivorous plants. How does it uh, catch its and it, it catches its prey uh, because at the end of one of, of lot, most of the strands here that form the tight bunch, there will be you know, several little stalks at the end will be this balloon-like bladder that, that has small um, trigger hairs coming out from the center of it and if a small aquatic bug or small very very small baby fish or something will touch one that will be attracted to it by the hairs and touch one of the hairs then that causes the bladder to have this trap door that will s swing in so that the bug will be sucked in and then it'll slam shut and the water will be pumped out and digestive juices will be pumped in. And it, the insects can be uh, sucked in in less than one fifth of a second and are digested in about three to four hours, making it the fastest eater in the carnivorous plant world. <clears throat> this one is another hybrid. It's really strange because it's actually a hybrid of two subspecies of Saracenia flava the Var Reguli and Var Maxima. When they were crossbred, it became this hybrid that is produces small uh, red, purple, sometimes even light green pitchers. So that's a hybrid. And this, which is the Saracenia rubra, it's the most variable pitcher plant and it produces, it has lot, many, many subspecies, but this is actually the main species in the genre. It's not a subspecies, it's the actual species. And it, ha, it makes tall, narrow pitchers at, with small, well, actually quite large hoods, bigger than the pitcher is wide. And it can be green and red and yellow. It's highly variable. And then this, the spoonleaf sundew, Drosera splotha. It's uh, kind of strange because it's a lot like Drosera slacky, except for it has more spoon like leaves instead of more rounded and spatula like. And it pr produces uh, multiple flower stalks at a time, making pink flowers uh, with, with small buds that will open and close at different times of the day. And by the way, this common name is the sweet trumpet plant, just so you know. The sweet trumpet plant, uh, S. rubra. And then this, the white top trumpet plant, Saracenia lecophylla. Uh, it's said different in different ways depending on where you live, so where you grew up and stuff. Uh, it's called the white top trumpet plant because of the distinctive white um, hood and white upper picture sometimes. And sometimes the tops will even be red, and that is called Dana's Delight. But the white top trumpet plant actually has white at the top instead of red. And then this is actually not an American native, but it grows well in the Americas. It's the Cape Sundew Drosera capensis, native to South Africa. It produces large droplets, much larger than. D. Slacky and D. Splatha. Uh, its leaves will curl around its prey, uh, also unlike uh, Slacky and Splatha. And there are many forms of Drosera capensis. There are actually four. And this one is the narrow leaf Cape Sundew, Drosera capensis. And then, yeah, that's all. And what kind of sunlight do they need? Uh, they, all of them need partial shade, 
to during part of the day that well, they need morning sun. Morning sun is what they most need. And during the afternoon and noon when the sun's the hottest, they require shade or the leaves will burn and cook. But and they can also tolerate like late, late afternoon sun. Late afternoon sun and morning sun is best for these. All these are American natives except for the Cape Sunday. Okay.